It appeared one day in the hallway of our bedroom, without any warning or announcement, as if it had always been there. I was the one who found it. It was early morning, the darkness hadn't yet dissipated, and I was getting ready to go out for a jog, trying hard not to disrupt my wife's soft snores as I slipped my shoes on. I got up, stretched my legs, and began creeping out of the room when I felt it at the back of my neck. A sudden burst of cold air, nipping at the flesh of my neck, causing goosebumps to spring up on my arm. I gasped as tremors ran through my body. What the fuck? I take a step back. And there it was. Icy cold wind, like the breath of an ice dragon, being exhaled by the wooden frame of the door. Where did it come from? Was there something wrong with the plumbing? I scanned the walls. No dampness in the walls anywhere. What else could it be? Maybe the old bones of the house had cracked with age, allowing the wind to squirm its way in. I had no idea. I shook my head and walked out, thinking I'd investigate it later when my wife was up. It was a beautiful morning. One that was warm and smelling of grass. I would have enjoyed it more had I not been so focused on the cold spot that had inexplicably appeared in my bedroom. Why was it so chilly when the day itself was this warm? Had the walls cooled the air down as it wriggled into the house? The temperature difference was too stark to be explained away like this. I found myself strangely fixated on the cold spot, so much so that I hadn't even realized that I had finished my run and made it all the way back home. I wasn't the only one affected by it. As I entered the house, wiping beads of sweat off my brow, I found my wife in our bedroom, standing near the door with a frown marring her once beautiful face. There's a cold spot here, she remarked. I know. It's weird. She cut me off. I don't like it. Get rid of it. I opened my mouth to say that I will, but she'd already turned away and marched off to our daughter's room. Breakfast was an odd affair that morning. As our daughter sat chattering away about some in inane middle school gossip, my wife chewed on her cereal slowly, deliberately, as she wanted to take the time to contemplate on its taste. Why is it there, anyway? She asked, abruptly cutting off our daughter's rambling. I shrugged. I don't really know. Of course you don't, she spat. I frowned. Now you don't have to. Get rid of it, she said, and walked off, leaving behind her bowl of unfinished cereal. My daughter looked at me questioningly. I called her to finish her food. I couldn't focus much on work that day. Every time the air conditioning swung my way and blasted me in the face with freezing air, my mind instantly reverted to that damn cold spot. My coworkers were concerned, said that I was too distracted. I brushed their concerns aside, but couldn't really get into my usual groove. I finally threw my hands up and got in touch with a plumber and a carpenter. The sooner I got rid of that thing, the sooner I'll be able to get on with my life. Do you think something's wrong with the air ducts? Asked a friend and co-worker while I watched him pour coffee into his mug, with whiffs of steam rising up hypnotically. It was warm, comforting. I'm like the... I don't know, I mumbled. It's too cold. Colder than what should be possible. Huh, he said. Weird. I finished early that day and returned home, whistling a half-forgotten tune in the cold car. I grunted and switched the AC off about halfway into the journey. Back home, I found my wife sitting in the couch in the living room. She'd been waiting for me. Did anyone swing by today? I asked. Jaw clenched as she glared at me. Yes, she replied. And I noticed her body shivering as if she'd been exposed to low temperatures for a long time. Couldn't fix it. Her teeth chattered. But of course they can't. I mean, ha. How do you expect outsiders to come and tell you what to do? It's your house. F f fix it yourself. My mouth felt dry. Like all the moisture had been sucked out by a saliva ejector. You're really cold. Have you been standing under it? Her face warped into a snarl, crow's feet sharpening like claws. Someone here has to, right? I don't want to, but someone's got to remember what's wrong here. I gawped at her. What? That doesn't make any sense. You don't have to stand anywhere. She groaned in frustration and got up to leave. Hey, wait! I grabbed her hand to stop her and instantly released it. It was like clutching a lump of ice. It stung the skin of my palm. What had she been doing when I was at work? 
She marched off to the doorway and stood there, her back facing me, her body vibrating as the cold crashed into her. I took my jacket off and ran towards the door. Stop, I said, wrapping the jacket around her. What the hell's wrong with you? She shrieked and violently tried to throw the jacket off, ignoring the biting cold scraping at my flesh. I tried to push her away, away from the cold spot, away from this obsessive madness. She screeched, slapped, and clawed at me, but I used my brute strength to carry her away from there. Heart pounding in my chest, I backed her into a corner of the bedroom. Past the disheveled hair falling down on her face, I saw her eyes flitting around like a concerned rat. Stop! Stop! I yelled. Fear and desperation clear in my cracked voice. Please! Stop this shit and talk to me! She took a step back, spreading her arms out on the walls like a spider and glaring at me. Teeth gritted, nose scrunched up, veins of her neck stretched painfully. She looked at me with such utter hate it made my knees wobble. I couldn't for the life of me figure out what was happening here. It was so bizarre. None of it made any sense. Please, honey, I whispered. Stop. She screamed and ran into me, past me. She shoved me aside and ran faster than I'd ever seen her run, before coming to an abrupt halt at the doorway, shivering and whimpering. She stood there, despite the pain, despite how weird it was, she stood there like her life depended on it. What are you doing? I asked. Exasperated as I tried to wrench her off her spot once again, she fought like a woman possessed as I heaved her onto my shoulders and carried her off to the living room before dumping her on the couch. Let me go! Let me go! She said, slapping at my hands. Let me go! I caught hold of her wrist and pulled her hands above her head, effectively restraining her. She opened her mouth and her chest started quaking as she began sobbing. Please, let me go! I have to go! I have to go! I have to go! I blinked and fought back tears. Baby, you're scaring me. What's happening? What's wrong? I have to go. I have to go. Da Why? Damn it. Why? I have to. I have to. She writhed under me, using all her strength to free herself, but I held on for dear life. I hit the gym daily and so often to be stronger than the average man. But believe me when I tell you, I had to use every bit of my strength to hold her down. But hold her down I did, and slowly... The fight left her until she was crying and mumbling nonsense under her breath. When it looked like she'd calmed down, I got her some water to drink. I have to stand there, she explained after gulping down a glass of lukewarm water. I feel it in my bones. Something terrible is going to happen if I don't. I tried to reason with her. Nothing is going to happen, okay? It's just air. Ear that can make you sick if you stand exposed to it for too long. Well, that, that's all there is to it. You don't understand. You don't get it. There's nothing wrong here, I continued. Just a random cold spot. And we'll get it fixed, okay? Nothing to worry about. Tears pulled in her eyes. I don't want to do it, she cried. I don't want to stand there. Please don't make me. What the hell? I, I'm not going to force you to do anything. But I have to, she insisted. I have to. Was she having a nervous breakdown? Was that what this was? It, it's okay. I hugged her and she grabbed onto me like I was a life jacket. I kept a close eye on her the rest of the day. Didn't let her out of sight until we had finished dinner. Tucked our daughter in bed and retired to the guest room, shutting the door behind us. There was no way we were going to sleep in that room and thankfully, my wife didn't insist on it. She'd calmed down since her outburst and was no longer fighting to stand in that doorway. But I took no chances and kept her within arm's reach. I craned my neck and looked at our bedroom once before locking the guest room door shut, and chills ran down my spine when I noticed a faint mist in the cold spot. I shook my head to clear it of cobwebs of doubt, confusion. Just a cold spot. Nothing more. My wife was not well. I promised myself to book an appointment with a therapist the next day. It's just a cold spot. He fell asleep with me on my back and her head on my chest. I woke up to an odd rhythmic thumping sound. Thump. 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 I sat up and saw my wife standing at the door. Softly banging her head against it, I checked the time on my phone. Just past midnight. Was she sleepwalking? Was this also a part of her sickness? I don't know, it creeped me out to think that even her subconscious was forcing her to move towards the cold spot. 
I got out of bed and walked toward her to bring her back to bed. No, I didn't have a lot of expertise with dealing with people who sleepwalk, so... So I did what Instinct told me to do. I placed my hands on her forehead and began gently redirecting her towards the bed. As I got her to lie down on the bed, I thought I heard something outside. I strained my ears to listen carefully. Silence. Hmm. Must have been my imagination, I thought, as I settled into the bed once again. It was morning when I woke up next. Sunlight was streaming into the windows and falling on my face. I yawned and stretched my arms and noticed I was cold and alone in bed. Fuck. Adrenaline flooded my body. I rolled out of bed and ran to the door. There she was. Not at the bedroom door, thankfully, but sitting listlessly on a wooden chair facing the damn thing. I could see the side of her face. It was blank like the life had been drained out of it. I glanced at what she was looking at. And it, it froze my heart. My clammy hands fell to my sides and shook like leaves in the wind. I stumbled forward, not wanting to confirm what I feared, and knowing that I absolutely had to. I approached the door, my eyes fell upon the big, misshapen lump of ice under it. It came up to my waist. It was about half as thick as a washing machine. I bent and I looked at it closely and my stomach dropped. Dear God. A strong gust of cold wind from above me and the irregular lump of ice wobbled. No, I reached towards it to steady it, but it was too late. The thing crashed to the ground. Shattering into a dozen pieces, a small, basketball-sized chunk rolled over and stopped at my naked foot, the ice freezing my toes, but I didn't pay it any attention. Because I was too busy looking at the lifeless eyes, set in the frozen, decapitated head of my daughter. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's podcast on the podcast, if you're listening to that there at Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or wherever you can happen to listen to podcasts. Also, I just want to take a quick second to tell you guys about HorrorCon VR. HorrorCon VR is actually a horror convention that I'm putting together with a group of my friends who are YouTube horror creators and other horror creators and just sometimes VR chat creators and things like that. You can find out more at horrorconvr.com or follow us on Twitter at horror underscore VR. It's going to be hosted on VR chat in October. And the best part is you do not need a VR headset to be able to join and play. So check out those places. Join us on Discord. And we do meetups every Saturday, which is fun. And of course, I wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who checks out patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta and supports the show, keeps the light on, gives me treats for my now two cats, both Hylas and Hercules. Both of them are a handful. And especially a big thank you to Haha Saha, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Mazakin, Ken Lando Higuchi, Chambinsky, Nico Kao, Tristan Pelton, Stephen Van Hus, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, G. Weevil 3, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Hades Nephew, Carter Barenfanger, Dr. Strawberry, Jordan Wayne Deckard, Bradney Lipe, The Government Monitoring System, Anne Charon, Rumble Fox, Acid System, Mike Bullock, Rafael Rodriguez, Dan Sweet, Mad Marshdomp, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Sean Mills, Brian Arce, Cryptic Nightmares, Shadow Morningstar, Somber Puppet, Brianna Wright, Someone You Love, Said the King 56, Bad Honey, S-Man, Kiri the Sloth, Patrick Schoolmeister, Thomas Burgett, Barbara Maceo, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, The Homeless Bird 93, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, and Corey X Kenshin. A big thank you to all of you guys and everybody down there in the description. I really can't thank you guys enough for supporting the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And everybody who listens, sweet dreams. <laughs>